Good morning, everybody. How are you today? I hope you're well. Uh, I hope you're all feeling a bit more energetic than me. Goodness gracious. My battery symbol is showing one bar and it's red. I suddenly feel really, really flat as a pancake. I think just because I think the last few weeks have been so busy, juggling so many things, just go, 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 go. And then of course, in the last week or so, I've had my lovely bit of time out, both with Richard and Paul and with my cousin. And today I've woken up and suddenly felt like, oh, I can't move. <laughs> yeah, definitely been burning the candle at both ends recently. Definitely trying to listen to my body. Now, I had been planning a full day in the garden, both today and tomorrow. Uh, then I'd looked at the weather forecast and it said two days of non-stop rain. Well, it's not raining, so yes, I could go to the garden. But like I said, I just am flat as a pancake. There's no point in me battling with myself to do the things I need to do out there. I won't enjoy it, it'll make me grumpy, and the way I feel it might make me end up feeling ill. So the great thing about being my own boss and having my irons in so many different fires is I can be flexible with my time. It's great. The garden is always my priority because it's food. It's always my number one joy <laughs> to do. Um, so yes, I would love to be doing that. But, like I said, physically I don't feel up to it. And because I do have so many other things on the go in my life, it means I never have to waste a day like today when I don't feel up to being really physical. There's still something else productive that I can do. Excuse me a sec. So, for instance, I've got a few parcels to make up. Oh, a word on parcels in a minute. I'm going to go through the post bag with you in a second. And I've got a lovely special offer just for you gorgeous people. More of that in a second. Yeah, I've got some parcels to make up of my own from my own shop. Uh, I've still got a couple of big parcels from my eBay sales to get over to the post office. Uh, I've got new, sh no, 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 new stock to photograph and upload. And actually, I've still got a load of stuff to put on eBay. So it's really good stuff for me to do. A day like today, when I'm feeling flat as a pancake, I can at least just say, sit at the computer and upload stuff that will hopefully eventually sell. And at least it's still kind of... Whatever I do today, it's going to keep me ticking over. That's a great thing. So, uh, yesterday I was mentioning about... Uh, oh, it's so funny. I, I hope some of you saw it, but um, the Great British Bake Off. I didn't manage to watch it last night. Uh, it was, again, it was one of those evenings because I'd taken the day out with my cousin in the evening and then needed to do some work and bits and pieces. But I have managed to watch it on Catch Up. I sort of watched it whilst I was doing something else and just kept having a little look. Um, I actually didn't mind Matt Lucas on it. I thought he was going to irritate me. He didn't. What I liked was... Um, <coughs> <coughs> normally he's... I, I find him too in your face, as it were. But I he seemed to have quite a sort of a humble demeanour about him. So that was great. But... It's exactly what I was talking about yesterday. Oh my goodness, the jeopardy. The uh, pineapple upside down cakes being tossed through the air and landing on the floor. Oh my goodness, that poor chap. That poor, poor chap. I'm so glad he didn't go out. Um, sorry, spoiler alert. Well, it's early days, isn't it? Yeah, so there was the moment of the cake going on the floor splat it's like it's week one <laughs> cake disasters already never mind that then it was followed by the program i was mentioning the write-offs oh gosh what a humbling watch that was 
So, as I was mentioning, it was about adults. They ranged in age from their 22 up to the oldest one is 66. These people who struggled all their lives to read and therefore write. I've often, when I think about that, I think, oh, you know, how it must be awful because the whole world of books is closed off to them. They don't have that wonderful world and it's it's worlds and universes isn't it that we get from books that's kind of that had always been my main thought for someone who can't read but I think what was great about the program was it highlighted just how crippling it is on a on a, the most mundane ordinary day-to-day -day lives business to to not be able to read not be able to understand signs at a bus station. All these things we take for granted. Uh, it was really, it was a really inspiring watch. I cried a couple of times, I knew I would. The next part is next week. Um, but it did make me think about, you know, other ways, other ways maybe, I don't know, it's something to explore, but other ways I could help. I know with my local community library, they have schemes helping kids with reading. Uh, and I know they normally, if it wasn't a COVID year, they have a, they have a summer reading scheme. So I'm definitely going to look into that and see if I can get involved with something locally. Because if I can help someone, if I can, I mean, look, the other thing to say is I'm not a qualified teacher. Of course I'm not teaching especially teaching adults to read and write is a hugely specialist thing and i'm sure the the tutors that we saw in the program have had years and years of training and experience so i'm not suggesting some idiot like me can come along and go oh look i'll teach you to read oh let's sit down together for an hour and i'll teach you to read no of course not but what i'm wondering is if locally we've got any schemes i can volunteer for with um, to be part of, to encourage uh, reading. Because, like I said, for me, the whole world of books is a joy. But never mind that. It's a very, very, very basic life skill. And if people are without that, then so much is closed off to them. And that's just awful. I can't bear that thought for them. So, yeah, it was a really, a, an incre like I said, an incredibly humbling programme to watch. Um full of hope as well, full of hope and some beautiful moments of people cracking things that, like I said, they proper made me well up. It was beautiful. So that's on again next week. I shall certainly try and catch that. Now, it is a quickie today because, um, like I said, I'm flat as a pancake. <clears throat> I'm looking over there at my desk. It's piled up with boxes and things to be sorted to post big pile of fabric ready for me to start cutting. Oh, 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 forgot to say. Have I mentioned it? I don't know. I had a call from my sewing machine people. My machine's ready to collect and it's much sooner than I had anticipated. So I, won't, I haven't got time to go and collect it this week, but I will be collecting it next week. That's going to be weird. But also that's going to mean once it's back in the flat, I'll be thinking, oh, I should be sewing, not doing dirt, dirt, dirt. So suddenly my days are going to be even more squished. Uh, great incentive. And actually, you know, that's another reason for a day like today to say, if you're not up to that like long day in the garden, stay at home, get all sorts of little jobs ticked off and out of the way so that when the sewing machine does come back, I can sit down and get stuck in and enjoy it. Brilliant. So, post bag. I want to say, I've got three thank yous to say. Um, well, generally, thank you all the time. Thank you all. I particularly love, this is a card from Hannah. Um, isn't that jolly? Oh, sorry, the collection. Isn't that jolly? It's called Forest of Bluebells. That's what it says on the tin. But uh, she's written me a long chatty note on the inside. Thank you so much, Hannah. And a couple of lines in particular... I, I won't read them out, it's kind of personal, but she was just saying that if ever I'm feeling a bit down, to remember the impact 
I know there's, you know, <laughs> I get a bit shy. But, um, and just saying, you know, you're not, you're not alone facing challenges. So it was really lovely and the timing of it was brilliant. So thank you so much for that, Hannah. Really, really, really lovely words. I love getting cards anyway. But I'll be honest, when I read it, you did choke me up. I think I'm a bit emotional at the moment, maybe. <clears throat> I think um, it's that thing, isn't it? I always say it's really good to have a good cry, a good sob. I, I'm probably due one. <laughs> Does that sound crazy? I don't know. I, I feel, I just, you know, I'm not sad. I'm not sad at all. I'm not down in the dumps. I'm just really, really tired. And at the moment... I feel like my emotions are quite raw, so like watching that TV show last night, watching a 66 year old man being able to follow a recipe for the first time in his life and the impact that had on him, I blubbed like a baby. Reading Hannah's card, I blubbed like a baby. So maybe what I should do later on today, I do need to do some work, um, but maybe what I'll do is I might put on a film this afternoon, a really weepy film, just and just get a good cry over and done with, and then like, right, that's done, shove it away, carry on, I don't know. Anyway, so um, the postman also brought a little parcel from uh, Grumpy Poo, shall we say, you'll see her Monica as Grumpy Poo, lovely little card. And again, some really, really lovely words inside and wishes for me. Thank you so much. But she'd also sent a few bits and bobs. <gasps> right, first of all, get this one, not out of the way as such, but quickly because I want to show you the other thing. Sent me a copy of Elizabeth and her German garden. Remember I was talking about Elizabeth von Arnhem oh, two, three weeks ago or so now. I didn't know. This is by Virago, the Mor Virago Modern Writers. It's a press that, um, I don't even know if Virago is still going, but they took a lot of out-of-print works by female writers and reprinted them in the handy paperback form. So, oh yeah, I think, I think for instance it was Virago, I used to collect them, things we collect and it was a Virago edition of Willa Carther um, when I first read Willa Carther anyway so I'm delighted because for all those years of me handling the book as a second-hand dealer and selling it on to other people I never did have my own copy or read it so that's lovely thank you literally in the last week my library has expanded by about 10 books which is so naughty because I had said to myself no more books this year add it but the other thing Grumpy Poo sent to me, so funny saying Grumpy Poo, uh, loads of some oh, bit, bits and bobs for sewing. And there are a few cards like this with some ribbons and some various buttons on, aren't they? Absolutely gorgeous. The I'm just trying to get it so you can see the colour. Lovely little fabric covered buttons. I love buttons and ribbons. Who doesn't? Yes, I have a button jar of course, but I also, because I'm a neat freak and a nerd, I have, it's an old, it's like a plastic box, about yay deep, maybe 30 by 20 and it's divided. It's my old plastic container boxing from when I used to collect fossils when I was a kid. I know, another nerdy pursuit. But now I have it for my buttons, so they're all sorted by sort of colour, size, that sort of thing love it sometimes i get it out and i just look at it it's so pleasing it's so pleasing to see all the buttons but to see them all sorted oh, love it so thank you ever so much grumpy poo <laughs> that's such a great monica <clears throat> excuse me <sighs> but now what i wanted to come on to and this is where you lot get your special offer uh, I had a message uh, a week or so from Rachel of Colliery Gardens, the YouTube channel. And I, you know, over the last sort of year or so in particular, I've lost, 
I've lost track with a lot of YouTube channels. I would say sort of three years ago when I was starting out, I watched more. But as time has gone on, obviously in the three years I've been without a wage, I've introduced more and more things into my life in order to be my cottage industry and keep myself going, you know, with the sewing shop, etc, etc. So obviously as I've introduced more and more things like that, I've had less and less time to spend watching YouTube videos. Uh, on the one hand I think, oh, it's a bit sad, but on the other hand I think, well, don't be daft Vivi, you're, you know, I'm, I'm living my life and I'm being productive and I'm enjoying it and it's great. So I hadn't looked at any of Rachel's videos for ages, so I went online to have a look and I think, correct me if I'm wrong Rachel, I think she stopped making videos. But I think I know why now, because she has started her own cottage industry. I'll just show you the box to start with, it's so lovely. Can you see? The Colliery Soap Company. The subtitle is Handmade Local Artisan Soaps. So it's lovely packaging. All of this packaging can be reused or ripped up for compost. And then it opens the little treasure boxes. And the flop at the front opens. In we go. Move the tissue paper. And then, oh, I don't want to tip them out. Isn't that lovely? There's a couple of soaps. There's, and then there's two lotion bars. <clears throat> one for hands. Whoop, love. One for hands, one for feet. Let me show you the foot one. So cute. So this is citrus foot butter. We go inside. Careful, baby. Can you see? Look, it's a little bee. Let me get the relief so you can see it. There we go. Um, a little bee and honeycomb. Isn't that just darling? It's one of those things, isn't it? In the summer, um, I go barefoot a lot. So, our, especially on our heels. I mean, I don't care about how it looks. It's more about how it feels. But it is nice to put a really rich butter on one's heels after one's bath. Especially at the end of the summer when the feet have taken a hammering from being bare. Um, the hand lotion bar for gardeners lavender calendula chamomile it's kind of i was going to say it's coals to newcastle isn't it there's a phrase in in the uk we say like taking coals to newcastle um because newcastle mining territory hence colliery soap company rachel's in the northeast in the old mining areas uh yes yeah, so to take coals to newcastle is like you know, giving something to someone they've got it already so obviously I make my own balms and butters but I don't do it commercially so I'm, I'm delighted to be able to share these with you today so yeah a little a little bar in there of a gorgeous mm, hand softening jobby <laughs> um, I will I can't get my lid back on it I will link her website Grapefruit and pink salt. That's a soap. I do love my soaps. <clears throat> I always use solid bar soap. I don't like plastic. You all know that by now. And even soap, you know, the, the liquid soap in the bathrooms, or whatever, even when, because of refilling them, eventually that bottle is going to end up in landfill. So I'd much rather have my solid bars of soap with a paper wrapper that I can rip up and put in my compost. So, really, really lovely. Gorgeous little treat for me there. Thank you, Rachel. And here's where, oh, sorry, stop being noisy, Vivi. Here's where you get your treat. I, I'll put all this information under the video today. Um, Rachel is giving all of you a 10% discount. If you, all you need to do is, obviously when you do your audit, it will come up, you know, apply discount code. So you apply the discount code Vivi 10 for 10% 10 off. So I think I think that sort of thing makes a beautiful gift. I know I don't want to say the C word, but we are all starting to think about Christmas a bit, aren't we? So if you're looking for something for a Christmas gift, obviously look in my shop first. <laughs> Sorry, Rachel, that has to be said. But yeah, you know, I love gifts. I love receiving gifts, I love giving gifts. 
and I've, I've said, I'm sure I've said it before, but I love practical gifts as well. I don't want, you know, china ornaments and stuff cluttering my home up. I want things like soap that I can use, food that I can eat, that sort of thing. And I like to give practical gifts too, because then I like to think of the person using it and thinking of me while they're using it. And I think that's, this is such a lovely thing, you know, there's no plastic in here. So if you've got a friend, family member, whatever, who's trying to, you know, is thinking about maybe even having a whole plastic free year, some people will challenge themselves to do that come New Year's. I've got no doubt. Then yeah, what a lovely little gift to give to someone. I think the prices are very reasonable um, compared with, I know there's, there's all sorts of companies where you can get similar things, but I think Rachel's prices are pretty good anyway, plus with a 10% discount. Mm. And I've just remembered, I should also say, the latest on her website is that at the moment she's only posting within the UK. Sorry, everybody else. I don't know if that will change at some point for her. Um, there is a notice saying that on her on her website. I think there is mention of it, it's only within the UK for now. So it may be that that changes at some point. But anyway, pop along, see all of uh, Rachel's lovely bathroom smellies to enjoy. Maybe think about your friends and family and what loveliness you may gift to them at some point in the future. Or be indulgent and gift yourself. Ah, oh, brilliant. What a lovely post bag. What a lovely start to the day when, like I said, I, I do feel a bit... I, I just feel... I feel like someone's unplugged me. <laughs> They've forgotten to charge me up overnight. That's myself, isn't it? I need to charge myself up. I think part part of that is it's been so oh, it's just been so beautiful, so wonderful to have literally three of the last four days. No, that's a fib. Three in the last five days. Hang on. Yeah. Three. Vivi. <laughs> Three of the last five days I've spent in company, in quite close company, and I haven't had that for ages. And, you know, on all three days, just talking till the cows come home, which is wonderful. It's just wonderful to reconnect, rebond. Uh, so I think part of my flatness is a little bit of a, oh, just missing them already. Uh, it's that bittersweet thing, isn't it, of having all the, the days leading up to it to look forward to, and then afterwards having that that horrible thing of having to say goodbye again for a while. Not forever, just for a while. So, I sound a bit maudlin, don't I? I'm not. I'm absolutely definitely not maudlin today. Don't worry. Uh, I'm just, uh, I just need a week on a Greek island lounging in the sea, just bobbing in the sea with a waterproof book. That's all I need. Maybe if I close my eyes and fantasise it, I'll get the effect. Ah, who am I kidding? I'll get on with the post. Right, on that note, I'm going to say cheerio to you all. I do hope your post bags are as lovely at times as mine. I'm truly grateful. I know, I'm spoilt. I am really spoilt. I thank you all, humbly. Thank you. So, yes, whatever you're up to today, however your body is feeling or however your mind is feeling, I hope you can have one or two, even if they're tiny, achievements today. And if you're really not up to it, oh, why don't you go and run yourself a nice long hot bath, go and indulge in some soapy time and just chill or read a book or watch the write-offs on catch-up. It's beautiful, well worth it. All right, my lovelies, until next time, which should be in the garden, I'm plugging myself in tonight. I really need to recharge and then hopefully see you all in the garden. But until then, please look after yourselves and each other. Be happy. Bye for now.